Good morning, friends. It is early and we have a special treat today. Josh is working from home, so I thought, let's go ahead and make a yummy warm breakfast. So we're gonna start by making a German pancake. So I'm preheating the oven to 425 degrees. And we've got quite a bit of stuff we need to get done today, but first thing we're gonna do is get a nice warm breakfast in the oven. And when you're making a German pancake, you wanna preheat the oven. <coughs> And we want to put some butter in a 9 by 13. You can do this in a cast iron, but I'm going to make a little bit bigger of a one so we can have some leftovers. So in our 9 by 13, we're going to add some butter. And we're going to let the butter melt in the pan. Now we're going to make the batter right in our blender. This couldn't be any easier. It's a great way to use up eggs. We're going to start by adding six eggs to our blender. It's always good to start with a liquid in the bottom of the blender. Now we're going to add one cup of flour. That's why I like to add the liquid first because then the flour doesn't stick at the bottom of the blender. You could use a stick blender for this as well. One cup of milk. This is so much easier than making pancakes and higher in protein, a pinch of salt and a splash of vanilla. And then we're going to blend this up. Now that our batter is done and I'm standing right here, I'm going to go ahead and replenish my vanilla jar. You guys have recommended that I put my vanilla, homemade vanilla, in one of these flip chop jars, and I love it. But it is empty, so we need to refill it. And we started making some more vanilla the other day in here, and I only put 20 vanilla beans in this half gallon, and I definitely want more than that. So I'm going to strain the vanilla from here. We started this vanilla together. I didn't mark on the top, but I think it was in June. So we're gonna take the vanilla that's already steeped long enough and put it in this amber jar. And then what I'm gonna do with these beans, because you can absolutely reuse your vanilla beans, I can link where I get my vanilla beans down below if you're interested in making your own homemade vanilla. We're gonna get all these beans into this half gallon and we're going to let this sit for three to six months before we start using it. Vanilla beans can be super expensive so you want to try to get as much benefit and bang for your buck as possible. So reusing them is a great way. So in this half gallon we put 20 brand new beans and I probably just put in another 10 or so that were, have already been used one time. And if we let this sit long enough we're gonna get a beautiful homemade vanilla extract. So I'm gonna wipe this down and put this away. And let's check on our butter. We also need to get some coffee going because it's early this morning and I wanna make some coffee for both Josh and I. All right, that has just a minute more to go. We have some contractors coming to finish the doors in our bedroom and our laundry room, which means I need to do some organizing and moving of some things so that they can do that today. We're gonna get some dinner going. I have a freezer meal that I wanna to make today, but I also wanna repurpose some leftover mashed potatoes and turn them into potato pancakes. I have never made those before and they sound so good. I was looking up recipes yesterday. You take your leftover mashed potatoes and you add cheese and green onions and egg. And I just think that sounds delicious. So we're gonna make some of those today. And then we do need to do some organizing down in the food storage room. So that's why I kind of want to get us motivated with a really yummy breakfast. I need to fill my pot up so we have the energy to get this day going. We are doing a Friendsgiving this weekend. I think I've mentioned that before. And I purchased quite a bit of some table decor things. And I kind of want to play around with the decor and see if we can come up with a design we like. So a lot of just random things around the house need to be done. I need to open some new coffee. Once we get the doors installed in the laundry room and in our bedroom, Josh is going to be moving his office into the laundry room so that we can get the baby's room set up. I kind of didn't realize how little time we have until we need that. So that's another reason why we we kind of got to get some organizing done around here. We finally ordered some furniture and things we need to get that set up, and I'm getting really excited about that. That's going to be a lot of fun, but we need to clear out that room first. Right, 
So we're gonna get our coffee going. Speaking of getting toward the end of pregnancy, we're also gonna be making some date recipes. These are supposed to be really good for the final stages of pregnancy. So hopefully we have time to get to making some date something today. Oh, butter is nice and melted and browned. We're just gonna take our batter and pour that right over top of the butter. So that pancake needs to bake for about 25 minutes. So while that's baking, I'm going to get the dishwasher unloaded and it loaded back up. My morning routine is to try to get into the kitchen and unload the dishwasher so that I can start my day out with an empty dishwasher. I don't cook every day, but if I'm in the kitchen and I am cooking, I like to be able to just put dishes right into the dishwasher as I cook so that I can try to keep the kitchen a little bit cleaner while I do the cooking process. So in the time it took us to bake breakfast, we only had about four more minutes left. We were able to get the kitchen clean. Well, I guess we're still working on it, but we're almost there. Get some coffee going, get some more vanilla made. I love having my kitchen sink clean too. That always feels like a really good refresh. I think our pancake is done. Oh my goodness. Friends, if you've never made one of these, it's so easy, it's so delicious. It's so impressive looking, look at this thing. So how I like to serve this is really simple. I'm gonna dish or pour up some coffee for Josh and I first thing. I have something special in the fridge we can put in our coffee left over from this weekend. We celebrated Thanksgiving with Josh's family this weekend, so I have just a little bit of leftover whipped cream. I'm just gonna put a little dollop on both Josh and I's. Just something a little special for him working from home today. So that's our coffee, delicious. For Josh, I'm gonna put just a tab of butter, and for me as well. And then he likes a little bit of maple syrup. Traditional is powder sugar and lemon juice, but I have a little leftover, barely any in here raspberry jam. So I'll use up the last of this raspberry jam in here. I really like applesauce on this as well, but that would mean I would have to go downstairs to get it. So we're just gonna put that little bit of raspberry jam and you know what, that's probably a perfect amount. And because my dishwasher is unloaded, I can put my jam right in here and we can wash that jar up so we can use it again. The beauty of canning your own goods is you can reuse those jars over and over. So here is our beautiful breakfast that took us just minutes to put together. So I'm gonna go bring Josh his breakfast. We're gonna go enjoy this. So I packaged up two of these leftover containers and now Josh has two breakfasts for the rest of the week. I just got a really fun package from Amazon that we'll go through in just a second, but we got the kitchen clean and I want to go out into our freezer meal freezer and figure out a protein, something that I've already prepped, have in the freezer that we can get going for dinner tonight. I've got a couple different options in here. Because we're gonna be making a potato side, I don't wanna do any of my freezer meals that are kind of like a full meal because I already have a side planned, so the protein is the main thing that we need to plan. We do need to eventually take care of, these are all tomatoes that need to be processed, but we just don't have the time to do that today. So we have a couple different options. We have meatloaf, we have a bunch of different marinated chickens, and we have some marinated pork. Let's see, you know what would be really good with these potato cakes that I'm thinking would be that mushroom wine pork let's see we're gonna take these poppers that we made together to thanksgiving at my mom's house so we've got this mushroom pork this is some pork chops that are in a mushroom white wine sauce we're just gonna let that thaw a little bit on the stove let me show you what i got on amazon when we were in costco we were talking about making some candles and i thought that that would be a really fun christmas gift so we're gonna do that this year Another thing I bought on Amazon because I couldn't find it at Azure is just some 
semolina flour to make our pasta that we're gonna be making this weekend. We're gonna be making some homemade raviolis. I just got two pounds of that semolina flour because we don't need a lot of it. And I didn't want to buy it through Azure and get, you know, a 25 pound bag. But I did get 10 pounds of soy organic wax. So we're gonna use this to make our candles. And it looks like I may have put a hole in them <laughs> when I open them. I got a couple different essential oils. I got mint, eucalyptus, cinnamon, and sweet orange. So we're gonna make two different scents. These were really affordable. It says they're 100% pure. And I did Google essential oils that you could put in candles because a lot of you guys have mentioned that you have to be careful when burning essential oils that you can, some of them are toxic actually if they're burnt. So eucalyptus, mint, orange, and cinnamon are all safe to burn. I got some wood wicks. So they will kind of give that little bit of, you know, like crackly sound. And I think we're just gonna put these in mason jars. I think that's the plan. And then I got a few little stickers. You put the wood in this little metal thing and then you use this sticker to stick it into the bottom of your candle container. So we're not gonna do that today. We're probably gonna do that in about two weeks. But I'm excited we finally got the goods so we can make those when we are ready to make them. And we do need this this weekend. This is that flour. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this right in my baking container here. So these essential oils that I got are four ounce bottles and they were way more affordable than the little bottles. And like I said, I did research and try to make sure that they were 100% pure. I know people have strong feelings on essential oils, but because these are going into candles, we're not putting them on skin or anything. I thought that this would be a great use for getting these a little bit more affordable ones. So they do come with these big droppers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these put together so that we can organize them. So when we're ready to make the candles, we can go ahead and just make them. If you're interested in any of this stuff, I can link it down below. And then when I opened the box, I cut the bag of wax. So I just put it, oh, I guess I didn't tape it well enough. Let's see if I can tape that a little better. I got a piece of tape out. There we go, let's see. There we go so that we don't lose a bunch of wax out the side. And the last one I got was cinnamon. Kind of what inspired this idea was when I was at HOA, the HOA conference, they, I bought some candles that were homemade. And I thought, you know what, that would make a really fun gift for Christmas. Oh my goodness, this is cinnamon. The cinnamon orange is gonna be so good. Cinnamon and orange and mint eucalyptus are my four favorite scents. And the good thing is, those are four very affordable essential oils. Now we have our four essential oils. I wanna to try to make this nice and organized in the laundry room so that when we go to do this project, we have everything right where we need it. As much as I wanna get going on this project right now, I know I need to focus on my Friendsgiving and getting some other stuff organized before we jump right into this craft. And then another really cool thing came to the doorstep from Amazon today, and that is the bassinet that I'm gonna be using. So I might go ahead and put that together today too. We might just see how this day unfolds for us and just go with the flow. I love when Josh is home and I can just putter around the house and get things done. Puttering is my favorite. Puttering does not mean laziness. It just means kind of going with the flow of the day and seeing all the little tasks we can accomplish that kind of add up to really big tasks. Let's go get this organized. What I really need to do is go shower and get ready, but there's so many more fun things that I could be doing right now. So in the laundry room, I have these cupboards here that I don't really have much in. In this one, I have our extra toothbrushes and things. And then down here, I have the few essential oils I have. So I think this is gonna be a great spot for these items. I mostly just like essential oils for the fragrance. I don't know much about the therapeutic benefits of them. Here are our wicks, our stickers. And then I did get this wax, it's to melt wax in it. I guess once you melt wax in something, it's destroyed. So I got this for that. 
And now we have this really cute shelf organized and ready for some Christmas projects. One of the tasks that I mentioned that we need to get to today is they are going to be putting the doors on this closet today, not today, tomorrow. So I need to empty all these linens out because they are going to be drilling and making dust. So we need to empty this and clear this. This is eventually going to be Josh's office until we can get the bonus area done. And that's not going to be done for quite some time. So realistically, just because we've got to put the trim in, paint, and then flooring. So this is going to become Josh's office. So what I want to do is get all of these extra items that technically are going to go up in that bonus room as well, like our luggage, our Christmas stuff, or not Christmas decorations, like our wrapping paper, all of that stuff eventually is going to go up in the bonus room. But for now, I think I'm just going to take it down to the basement and I want him to have a place that he can kind of have his office, even though it's still technically the laundry room, it's not going to have some of those extra things in here that just don't need to be in here when I could put them in the basement for him. And then we can clear out what is currently his office and we can put all the baby stuff in one place, which will feel really nice because right now we have that stuff everywhere. So I'm going to go recycle this and then I think I am going to go ahead and take a shower. I can't help myself. I just started a load of wash. I figured I might as well have my washing machine going while I'm showering. I'm going to put away my ironing board set up. I just use a towel and an iron and I'm going to get this, what is this called? <laughs> this dryer empty and I'm going to start some laundry today because we also have to, but the master two closets are getting their doors tomorrow too. And we don't want all of our clothes getting really dusty and gross as well. So we need to empty these. And Josh normally does all his own laundry on the weekends, but because I'm kind of taking this day to reset, get some things done, dinner is mostly taken care of, I'm going to go ahead and try to start having some laundry going and we can start having that kind of passively going while I'm doing other things like emptying all of these closets. I'm so excited to be able to close doors and not have to look and see what is in our closets all the time. This is one of my favorite types of loads of laundry to fold. It's mostly just dish towels and hanging up a few sweaters. I can always get this type of laundry done in minutes and it feels like I've accomplished something. All right, one load folded. That feels good. We've got the washer going, the dryer going, the dishwasher going. I had enough dishes to go ahead and get that going. Now that my appliances are working for me, I'm gonna go take a shower. So I am showered and ready and refreshed for the day. I took Josh's clothes and I separated them out based on permanent press, things that need to be hung up right away after they come out of the dryer. And I rotated the laundry. Now what I'm gonna do is I have this table here. I'm gonna set a spot out up here where we can set up our clothes so that they're out of the way of getting all dusty and yucky from the little bit of construction that's gonna happen. So I just have a folding table, nothing fancy. I don't even know if this is a good idea, but this is what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna start emptying out these clothes, trying to keep like things with like things so that when I need to put them back, it'll be easy to put them back. Oh! I don't want to drop them. I want them to stay on the hanger so that they're easy to hang back up. Worry about moving the hangers. 
I think the shoes, I'm just going to move over to the other side of the room. I don't think I need to take those out of the room at all. That was relatively easy. It was awesome that Josh came and helped. So we got these closets completely empty. I went ahead and put the shoes just over here. Half of the clothes are here, and then the other half are in the closet that is currently Josh's office. Now the reason we can't really start setting up the Josh's office once we move it this week to, to be the baby's room and like get that ready is I have some friends coming in this weekend for Friendsgiving, and that's gonna need to be the guest room. Eventually our guest suite is going to be in the bonus area where there's another kind of private bathroom and things but there's no flooring or anything. So we're gonna make a temporary guest room down here in the meantime. So now, now that we have those two closets emptied, we need to go through and empty this closet and this room. You wanna know something funny? So my dogs, their food, bowl, and water are right here. And they think they're so, so sneaky because we put an extra bag of food right there. And one day they kind of ripped into the bag and they really like eating their food out of this bag and they think they're being so sneaky and naughty by sneaking food. Orbit, what you doing? What you doing? <laughs> he doesn't like it when we pay attention when he's eating. So let's go ahead and get this closet emptied. got this is empty as I think we need to empty it I'm gonna leave the dog food there that gets dusty I'm not really worried about it you can see how the dogs do like to eat out of that silly bag I think we're at a point where we can rotate our laundry again yep these are nice and dry another load of towels which are my favorite I'm really bad about separating laundry into like things with like things but today I'm taking the time to do that just so that, because I'm gonna be doing Josh's laundry too, and I don't normally fold and do this much laundry at one time, I'm just doing myself a favor and making life a little bit easier. So in this load, all I have are t-shirts, underwear, and shorts, like workout shorts. So it'll be really easy to fold because there's only three things in it. I took out all the socks, all the polos and all the pants. Maybe one or two socks went in there, but that's okay. So this basket here is just pants and polos so that I know when I have these in the dryer and socks, his like nice work socks. When these come out of the dryer, I'm gonna have to hang them up right away or they will get wrinkly. Probably gonna take two loads. He's got a lot. Yep, I think that's gonna take two loads. officially have two loads of laundry folded another load in the dryer another load in the wash I'm gonna put all these towels away which is great because we are going to be cooking up a feast here in the next couple days and I know I will need all these towels because I kind of make a mess a little bit when I'm in the kitchen so I like to have a good supply of towels before I get into the kitchen and do any sort of cooking and I don't have one dish towel in my drawer right now, which is not gonna work for me. So all my chores are basically kind of done. I did go ahead and empty out the refrigerator. So I do need to unload and load the dishwasher with the dishes that I took out of the fridge to kind of clean it out. And then all I'm gonna be doing for the rest of the day is laundry until we come back to make dinner. But I wanted to go ahead and kind of set this table. We bought all of these goodies 
and I kind of wanted to play around and see if we can find a pretty tablescape that we want to have for the dinner party this weekend. Since we have everything kind of passively working for us right now, the first thing I bought is this really pretty table runner that has some really nice texture to it. It's just white and I thought, you know, this could be used for multiple seasons in a row and that's why I went with it. So let's, okay, this is interesting. I did not realize this does not fit. It doesn't go off the ends of the table. So let me show you what I mean by that. My other table runner kind of comes off the end of the table. So I'm not sure if this is a normal thing to have for a table runner or if that is kind of a faux pas and it should run off the edge of the table. But I really love the color of it and the texture. I think it could go for a lot of seasons. So let's go ahead and finish decorating it. I have some different candlesticks here that are brass that I've had for a long time. I've got a bunch of different shapes and sizes. I've got, let's start with three of those and mix those in with these black ones. These are ones I got from Ikea. They're, they're nothing fancy. Let's see. When we were together, we bought these little Christmas trees. Now I know this is a Friendsgiving, so it's supposed to be Thanksgiving theme, but I think they're kind of pretty and I'm trying to decide if I want them on the table for the Friendsgiving. I'm trying to think of different things that have different heights. And these are obviously a little bit shorter. And then I have just some gold tea light holders. I do have these pine cones I bought that are cinnamon scented, but now I don't know if it's getting too busy. If we should put, well, that's kind of pretty. You'll have to let me know if you think that the pine cones are a little too much for the table. I'm trying to think of odd numbers. We have two, four, six. Then I have some new candle sticks to put in the brass candles. So friends, this is what we're working with so far. Let me know what you think. I'm kind of liking it. I don't have out the placemats or the napkins or the plates or anything like that. I'm just trying to get an idea of the table runner and if we think we're liking the way that, or the direction that this is going in. I think it's pretty, but I think it also could be a little too much. I do have a little bit of over there. I have some what is that called? Eucalyptus leaves that I could put along the bottom and maybe take up the pine cones or the Christmas trees and get rid of one of the elements. And then let me know what you think about the table runner if we need to return it because it's a little too short for the table. I am having fun though, just playing around with the different options we have. These are just some brass candlesticks that I got at Goodwill over the years. I often get asked if I rest and it is 1.16 right now. We have two more loads of laundry we need to do. We're gonna make dinner. We need to unload and load the dishwasher. But yes, I do rest. I need to take a break. My hips are starting to bother me. I'm feeling tired. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna catch up on a little bit of TV. <laughs> I didn't watch much TV last night and I have a few shows I need to catch up on. So I'm going to make some tea and what I was going to do was set up that bassinet and I was telling Josh that I wanted to do that and he was getting a little bit sad that he wasn't going to be able to help. So we're going to put that off and we're going to do that tonight together. So for right now, I'm going to take a break on my chores because I have my washing machine working for me. I could unload the dishwasher and reload it, but I'm just not going to do that right now. I'm going to listen to my body, make myself a cup of tea, and rest. I might even go sit outside. It's extremely sunny right now. That's why you can't see anything, and my chickens are out there. We actually got snow yesterday, which is crazy for us to get snow this early. Josh actually said when he drove to work, when he started to drive into town, there was no snow. So I'm really excited that we're gonna be getting more snow up here where we are. 
but my chickens are out in the backyard and I'm thinking maybe it would be good mental health break to, oh yeah, we were gonna make some date recipe too today. I forgot about that. We'll do that when we make dinner. I need to sit down and maybe I'll go sit down outside if it's not too cold in the sun and I'll enjoy watching my chickens play around in the backyard. start out with two eggs and then we're gonna add two cups of our mashed potatoes so in my crock pot I probably have about two and a half cups so I'm gonna go ahead and just add the rest of the mashed potatoes and I'll turn the rest of these mashed potatoes into these potato cakes and then I need to dice up some green onions so I have two green onions that I just washed and removed the outside leaves on these are kind of big onions, so I'm gonna cut them in half before I slice them up. I'm gonna use the greens and the whites. That in there. And now we're gonna add some cheddar cheese and some all-purpose flour, about six tablespoons. So a little over a quarter cup, and we mix all of these yummy ingredients together. This is gonna take a minute because my potatoes are so cold they're pretty stiff i probably should have scrambled up those eggs a little bit before i attempted to mix this but that's okay so we have our mixture nice and mixed up we have a really nice consistency here i think i don't know i've never made these before but i think this is a great way to repurpose some leftovers into something a little bit different so you don't get tired of eating you know just the same old plain old over again you can also make your mashed potatoes into potato gnocchis which that's what i do usually but i still have some gnocchis in the freezer from last time i made them and i can actually link a video if you're interested in how to make potato gnocchis down below so all i'm doing to form these into patties is i'm taking i don't know maybe that's probably a half a cup it smells so good I'm not adding any more salt or pepper because these are very flavorful potatoes already and I don't wanna over season them. We have a little while before dinner. I'm just prepping this right now while I have some energy. So I'm putting them on this parchment paper and we'll cook them up in a little bit. All right, there we go, perfect. Now that we have part of our dinner going, Let's go ahead and make those date balls. So I need to look up a couple recipes so that we can make them because I've never made them before. I'm gonna go ahead and stick our cakes in the fridge so that they'll be ready for us when we're ready to make them. I don't think we need anything out of the fridge to make the date balls. I think we need some peanut butter. I wanna put some almonds in there and let me look up a recipe. I think I wanna go with a chocolate flavor. And I don't think we need to add any sweeteners because dates are very, very sweet. Ooh, date hazelnut. This one has 33 reviews and five stars. So let's see what this one looks like. This is called Chocolate Energy Date Balls. Jump to recipe. Dates, pecans, cashews, cocoa powder, almond butter, unsweetened almond milk, and vanilla. All right, we can do that. I can just substitute some of those nuts because I don't, I don't think I have all of those nuts. 
I have some almonds out. We can use those. After looking that recipe up, I don't even think I'm going to follow that recipe. I'm just going to make this up. Hopefully it turns out because I should be eating apparently three of these a day. I just ordered some more so that I can get some more. Dates themselves are not my favorite. There is an appetizer that I really like to eat with dates. It's where you literally take a date and you wrap it in bacon and that's absolutely delicious. Maybe I will have to do some of that. But dates have a pit in the inside. You can buy them pitted, but they're more expensive. And it doesn't take much to take the pit off or take the pit out. You just kind of fold them in half and put them in there. But dates are super sweet, so I don't think we need to add any sweetener to this. And they're super, super sticky. So I'm going to go ahead and pit all of these. This is a one pound package, and I've had these for quite some time, so it's good that we're using them actually. So I am gonna look at that recipe just for kind of ratios of what I need to go for. So that's about probably I would say two cups or so of dates. And this recipe calls for two cups of dates and one cup total of nuts. I have some roasted salted almonds here that need to be used up. So I'm gonna put some of those in there and I'm not gonna add any more salt. We'll use that as our salt. Apparently, and there, there's a lot of research out on it, that dates are really, really good for helping labor. So if I can do something to help with that, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. We're gonna add about, let's see, two tablespoons of cocoa powder. And I really like cocoa powder. So I think I'm gonna add four. This is really good for you too. A lot of, I think they're called phenols, don't quote me on that but just plain cocoa powder or cacao powder is really, really healthy. I used to put just cocoa powder in my coffee all the time. And now we're gonna add two tablespoons of, this is peanut butter. This recipe calls for almond butter, but I don't have any almond butter right now and we added almonds, so we are gonna use some peanut butter. A Little bit of vanilla. And I think that's everything. Uh, it just says salt and some almond milk, but I'm not going to add any salt because our, our nuts were salted. Let's blend this up and see if it needs any moisture. So I want this to turn into like a paste, and this is still super kind of chunky, so I think I'm going to add a little bit more peanut butter to it. Now these are going to be pretty high energy little balls, so they are basically probably going to be like a breakfast replacer or a kind of like a, a dessert because they're gonna be pretty sweet from the dates. So let's add a little bit more peanut butter to that and see if that helps kind of get this to combine. I think we're almost there. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more peanut butter because it's still just a little bit crumbly. Just a few more, maybe a tablespoon or two. I don't have any non-dairy milk to put in here and I don't really wanna put dairy milk in here. I think that would be a little bit odd. All right, I think that's more the consistency we're going for, for it to be kind of balled up in the food processor. I think that's nice and sticky now. I think I'm gonna give that one more mix and we're gonna call that good. And we should taste this. I haven't tasted it yet. That's really good. That does not have very much date flavor, which is a good thing for me. It's sweet, but it's not like sickeningly sweet, which I was kind of worried about with the dates. I think that we just put the raw cocoa powder in there and the salted almonds really helped. And then my peanut butter is not a super sweet peanut butter either. So I just have my cookie scoop here. I'm going to scoop these out and I think the goal is to eat about three of them a day. I think that this would definitely be a nice breakfast with some tea. There is quite a bit of protein with the almonds and the peanut butter. This would make a really yummy little dessert at the end of the night. I'm just gonna roll these out until we have them all rolled out. I think the key is definitely gonna be to come up with some different flavors because it would be fun to see if we could get some different profiles, flavor profiles. I'm gonna blend this up one more time. 
You all were so sweet on my grocery haul when I was talking about that coat I bought and whether I should return it or upsize it. And you all were so sweet and you <laughs> definitely had a light bulb go off in my head because you were like, you don't have very much longer to go. So even if you have to keep it unzipped for a couple, you know, two weeks at max, because it still fits and there is still some room and we only have about four weeks left to go before baby comes, then after it should fit hopefully. And so I'm gonna keep that green coat because I really liked it and I think it should be perfect. Our coldest months typically in the Pacific Northwest are January and February actually. So I'll be able to get a lot of use out of that green coat. These are almost done being rolled out. I only have this last one left. My dogs are sitting here so patiently waiting for me to drop something, but unfortunately, boys, these have chocolate in them, so you can't have them. So I'm gonna put these in the fridge and I'm gonna go ahead and start enjoying, I think two to three, I probably should at least do three a day. Not a bad way, I guess, to take some vitamins if you wanna look at it that way. So now I'm gonna clean this up. We have dinner going. I wanna go ahead and get our vegetable side dish going too. That's only gonna take a minute to throw together. But let me get this in the dishwasher and this needs to go in the wash. So for the side dish to go along with tonight's dinner, along with our potato pancakes, we are going to have a cheat. This is the kale salad from Costco. This stuff is delicious and it's a convenience item that we are going to take full advantage of tonight. So there's two of these kale salads that comes in this Costco kit. Oh shoot, I didn't mean to, uh, darn it, I opened both bags. But one of them, we're gonna stick back in the fridge. I think I can tie it back in a knot. They make them in littler bags now, which is kind of nice for at least Josh and I because it's more of an appropriate size salad. This salad has all sorts of goodies in it. It has kale and Brussels sprouts cabbage i just added the cranberries and pumpkin seeds and it comes with a poppy seed dressing i'm just going to use the dressing today for this salad and then i do like to add when i make this just a splash of vinegar because the sweet kale part of the salad is a little bit too sweet i think it helps to add just a little bit of vinegar and then i just mix this up and this is one of those salads that does taste a little bit better if you mix it up a little bit before you serve it. And just like that, we have all the components of our dinner made. How easy was that? That's the beauty of a freezer meal and a nice convenient salad from Costco is that made that super, super easy for dinner. I guess I technically made these potato cakes today, but by using the leftover mashed potatoes, they were super easy to throw together. So this worked out perfect because Josh said if I didn't, well, I just mentioned to him that I was getting to his laundry today and he said he really appreciated that because he was gonna have to do laundry tonight anyway if I didn't get to it. And now he'll be able to help set up the bassinet as opposed to, well, he probably will have to help fold laundry because there's no way I'm gonna get to all of this folding, but at least I'll be clean. You can probably hear my dog drinking. <laughs> He's drinking out of his bowl over there. This next load that's going in the dryer definitely has to be hung up right when it comes out. Otherwise it'll get wrinkly. It's kind of the nice thing is sometimes Josh helps me out with things then surprises me like taking over my chicken chores and then I don't mind, you know, helping him with his laundry every once in a while. This is the last load going in. Probably not a completely full load, but we'll just go with it. I'd rather just have all the laundry done tonight. So now I wanna go ahead and get these potato pancakes cooking. I would be lying if I said I wasn't nervous about this because I'm kind of worried they're gonna stick. If I had avocado oil, that's what I would prefer to, we're gonna kind of pan fry them in, but I all my avocado oil is now garlic oil and that would be way too much garlic oil to cook them in, so I am cooking them in olive oil, but that would not be my first choice. A channel I found maybe about a month or so ago that I've been watching a lot of is In the Kitchen with Mama Mel, and this is one of her absolute favorite things are these potato cakes, and I have never made them. 
she is in the South, and I think they're more of a Southern type thing. And so she's the one that inspired me to attempt this recipe. And what she says to do is get your cast iron nice and hot. We're gonna put the cakes on there and then we're not gonna to touch them until they form a nice seared crust and we're gonna be able to flip them. The one thing is my stove is not level. It definitely tilts toward the back a little bit. I think a lot of stoves come with little feet you can adjust. I haven't even mentioned it to Josh. I should mention it to Josh to see if he can level out my stove because the oil always wants to go toward the back of the cast iron. We need to check on our pork chops too and see how they're doing. Oh yeah, they've got a little bit more to go there. I think I could have let this get a little bit hotter. So before I put any more on, I'm gonna let the cast iron get, I wanna hear more of a sizzle than that. Now we're not gonna to touch them until they have formed a crust, I think. While our cakes were cooking away, I thought I would take a minute to go ahead and get the dishwasher unloaded and loaded and a few dishes washed up. Also, oh, it's releasing. Oh, look at that. <gasps> look at that. Okay, so some of them haven't quite released yet. Okay, I need to let the rest of them kind of sit for a minute longer before I attempt to flip them. I'm gonna rotate this because my cast iron doesn't cook evenly. I don't know if I've ever mentioned to you guys that this is a large cast iron. This is not a, I think this is a 17 inch cast iron that I use on this stove. And I absolutely love this cast iron. I can link it down below. I couldn't use it at my last house because it got warped and on the glass stove it didn't sit level and now that i'm back on a gas stove i can use it again okay so these are releasing perfectly now oh my goodness they're so beautiful i wish you could smell it they smell incredible oh that one got a little dark I'm gonna turn the stove down just a little bit so that they get heated all the way through. We did add that flour, and so I wanna make sure that they get cooked all the way through so that the flour and the egg aren't gummy in the middle. And I'm going to put some paper towel on our cookie sheet, and we can just repurpose our cookie sheet. So these are nice and brown on the bottom. At least that one was. Okay, the rest of them need to cook for a minute longer. Woo! Our pork chops have a little bit more time left. So I'm gonna give this a taste test because we're not gonna eat dinner for a while. I'll put these in the oven with the pork chops right before we go to eat them so they're nice and hot. Ooh, do you see that? There's some cheese oozing. Look at that crunch on that. And it's gooey and soft in the inside. I've never made anything like this before, so. Well, that's not true. I've made risotto cakes before. If you've ever made risotto, you can take your leftover risotto and kind of turn them into something like this, which I haven't done that in a long time. That sounds really good. Those potato pancakes are probably one of the best things I've made in a long time. If you like mashed potatoes, those potato cakes are 10 times better than any mashed potato between the crunch. And I think that green onion is key in there. So good. Those are gonna be perfect. Drizzle in a little bit of the mushroom sauce from our pork chops that are in the oven with our side salad that has some of that vinegary bite to it. It's gonna be the perfect combination and the perfect dinner. Today was an awesome day between what we got done, because we got a lot of productivity done today, but we also got a lot of rest in today. And that's something that I've definitely been working on prioritizing and being okay with. Sometimes we can, or I can, feel guilty when I prioritize rest, 
but I don't remember if it was my dad or Josh or somebody, somebody told me rest is productive. If we don't rest, then we are going to get burnt out and we're not going to be able to get the things done that we need to get done. And so trying to find that balance of actual productivity and resting so that we can be as productive as possible when we are up moving and being productive. So I'm going to have another cup of tea. Can't get enough of tea lately. It's just so good. What I've been drinking is raspberry leaf tea for um, my recommendation from my doctor and I love it. It's so, so good. I read a few comments that a few of you guys don't like raspberry leaf tea and I cannot get enough of it. It's so good. In the mornings, I typically mix it with some oolong or black tea or something. And then like right now at night, I just have raspberry leaf tea and I'm gonna drink a couple cups of this. I'm gonna sit down and relax again while I wait for our pork chops to be done. I just wanna say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I greatly appreciate every single one of you. You all mean the world to me. If you wanna watch a few more of my videos, I can pop some there. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend. Cheers.